it's like a dreamscape, really, honestly. Like, it almost doesn't seem real. What I'm part of now. I was just part of a dozen guys in one location. Got a lot of time invested in this, so, yeah, it's, it's neat. Now I'm to a point that I'm taking, you know, didn't really hit me until I was, I hit my 30th anniversary here. It was like, wow. Like, where's the time going? I previously was working at a car dealership, and that car dealership had a body shop, and that body shop was always booked up for several months. So uh, my assumption was is that if I open the doors, there's gonna be lots of people that wanna get their cars fixed. That was one of the biggest surprises right off the bat was that there weren't a zillion people looking to get their cars fixed right then. I was around five years old when, when this building opened up under my father's ownership. And, you know, we had lived around the area for a little while. And then it was just, I don't know, he had gotten me interested in cars at a very young age. And so coming in the shop and seeing how they were being put together and painted. You know, my brother and I on the weekends and over the summer, we would work here at Webster Groves and also our other store in Ellisville, sweeping the floors, taking out the cardboard to the recycle center. Just kind of got familiar with the, the whole shop culture. You know, at that time, my father's business had really developed from where we are today at the first store to a network of stores. And he gave me a lesson in kind of like success rates of businesses when they open. So in the first generation, you know, maybe 20% of companies succeed, 80% fail. When that business is, is um, transitioned to the second generation, it, it's roughly that same percentage of success versus failure, but it's compounding on the original. So it, it was made very clear that, um, you know, that in order to achieve the, the same level of success, it was going to be twice as hard, which kind of got me excited. Scott has always been very good at uh, seeing big things and saying, yes, we can be that or do that. You know, early on, um, I was criticized uh, many times for, you know, why are you spreading your efforts out among several shops? You just have one big shop and, and, and make a lot more money. And that, that was all fine, except that uh, I really felt like it was important to be closer to the customer than that, meaning, a little closer to their home. I know that it wasn't as good financially early on because of that, but you know, there's customers in that part of town that need what we think is a good thing. So let's do that, let's do it there. And it all started here, you know. I mean, not just this booth, but this location. I've got enough time personally invested in it now that, that it's as much my, my pride and joy as it was Steve's. Um, it still is Steve's. He had devoted his entire life to this at that point in time. I'm pretty sure that Steve didn't own a car when I started here. They had a car that I guess him and his wife shared, but there were times I would give Steve would ask for a ride. And I'd be like, well, where do you, where you need to go? I can take you. No, just, I don't want to inconvenience you. Just take me to this point and drop me off. I'll get it from there. And that's what I love about Steve. And that's what's taught me. Like, Steve would never ask you to do something that he hasn't done or wouldn't be willing to do. Dig the pit in the ground. Before opening up here, I kind of put together a little plan of what we needed to do in this business to get it to where I wanted it to be in Webster Groves. That also kind of required a better paint booth, basically, and I remember sharing it with my dad at the time, and 
and, and everything, and he listened. And so anyway, I'm in business for about a year here with the old paint booth that was here. And, you know, it's been a struggle. You know, you're uh, out of cash most of the time or things are that tight and you're looking at that and saying, gosh, you know, maybe I just need to pass on doing doing that, you know. I remember having that conversation with my dad and he goes, you know, you put a lot of thought into that plan. I think you need to follow your plan. So uh, we ordered the paint booth and we needed to dig a pit in the floor and there'd be uh, three or four of us back there with pickaxes and shovels. We'd have to use a pickaxe to loosen up the dirt and then shovel it into the dump truck and take a load of dirt out of here. We did that every night for a long time. <laughs> uh, what it took to get that first paint booth put up. But looking back on it, that was critical because it allowed us to deliver on to the customer what we, in our minds, felt we needed to do, which was a good, was quality paint work. Steve was doing all this stuff. Steve, Steve's rewired this building. Steve was the everything when I first started here. I, I even want to say that we didn't have an accountant in the company when I started. He was the, <laughs> he was, he was it. So sometimes I struggle with that to this day. The way things were and the way things are now. Um, like I don't know everyone in the company like I used to. It's almost impossible. Um, we're so spread out. And there's so many and I'm here, you know, doing my thing. So um, it's like Steve's always said, no change in an ever changing world is not a good thing. So you kind of just have to embrace it and go with it, you know. I learned a ton from my father along the way. He's been my uh, number one mentor in, in everything, uh, especially business, but, you know, and, and how to communicate with people, how to motivate people and, and refine processes and find ways to be better than everybody in the market, you know. When I um, transitioned into Schaefer Auto Body, I was tasked with opening, we'll call it our fifth store. And I remember uh, the first year or so, uh, because of some disputes that we had with city council and acquiring our conditional use permit, uh, we, we had to operate under the name of the former owner of the business for a little while, which made things very challenging. I remember you know, in the early days um, just taking whatever I could get you know, and, and taking care of the customer and trying to build that reputation. And it took a little while, but, uh, but it was worth it. You know? That's really been the driver over the whole time is uh, what's the, you know, what's the right way to take care of a customer? Because honestly, that's, that's what one of the drivers for me getting into business was I hated it when I would see customers not taken care of well. And there was a lot of it. And I just, that's the piece that uh, always irritated me. And I always was convinced we can do a better job of that. I think that a lot of family businesses, there's such a resistance to letting go that it really creates problems uh, over many years. Uh, I've seen it many times, I really have. And, uh, and you kind of have to be unselfish and, and, and let it go, you know? You just have to. You can't always follow, you know, the technical advice you would get from an attorney or an accountant doesn't necessarily always mesh with that, okay? It just doesn't. All that stuff is not worth anything if it, uh, the relationship doesn't survive or if there's resentment down the road or you, know, you get to where later in life and, and your kids have never, you know, done it without you. That's not a good thing, <laughs> you know? I lost my dad um, 25 years ago. He was 63, died of a sudden heart attack. So he only knows that I had two children. The other two came after that, but 
my grandfather and my father both um, had their careers at a single location or business, so I maybe just assumed that would be the case. But when I, um, I knew what I wanted to do, and this was the perfect opportunity for me to do it in. For the success I've had and, and what I do mimics enough of his life that I, I hope, I think I've made him proud. He was what I always strived to be. And uh, I've been able to take, been able to take that from being very meticulous and perfection oriented into a production mode that I can find a happy balance. So that I feel like I've succeeded at. You know, like I said, I've always, I've always chased and always will probably chase perfection. Um, it's just in my, my DNA. But like Steve once said, I, I remember the first paint job, first overall paint job I did, and I don't know if there was a speck of dirt in it or whatever. And I was so proud of it. I brought Steve in and he's like, oh, that's awesome. Now, can you do that again, twice as fast? Uh, we'll give it a shot, you know, and it's just been refining the process. I'm very methodical to re refine the process over and over again. Any repetitive motion, you know, becomes a muscle memory type thing. In some ways, I don't feel like it's been 34 years until you start thinking back about all the things, time changes and, and things that have changed inside the company. This can only happen when you've worked as long as I have in one location. The new BMW that I painted in 2000 is back at the shop because dad gave it to his son who's now driving it to college. So yeah, I've, I've repaired on the same cars and or for the same families for, for generations. But yeah, it's kind of neat when a car comes in, I'll be like, there's something unique about the car that makes me remember. I think I've, I think I've painted this car before. Oh, it's Mike Jones' car. I don't know, I remember Jones, you know, the name strikes a bell. But. Yeah, it takes time to make history like that, you know, you, uh, yeah. We're here if you need us. As long as 50 North Gore is here, I guess I'll be here, so.